Now, last time we talked about doing some experimental fly tying, and what do you do when it goes wrong? Well, spaghetti can. But today, I've got an example of one that went right. But before that, I've got something really cool. Some of you older tires out there are really going to get a kick out of this one. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So what I'm talking about that is really cool is, take a look at this, the Knoll Number 20 Special Fly Tying Kit. Now this is a vintage kit from the 1950s. It's an original kit, and apparently this was one of the really popular kits way back in the 50s. So lots of kids probably grew up learning to tie flies in something like this. Now, I'd be willing to bet not a lot of you folks watching this channel have ever seen this or owned this kit, but if any of you have, oh man, please leave a comment. That would be so cool to hear about anybody that has seen this kit before, or certainly if you've had one. So, okay, enough of that blast from the past. Let's talk about today's fly. So I mentioned to you, it was an experimental pattern. I was just playing around on the bench last fall, really wanted to come up with something that, um, you know, would be heavy and I could kind of use it to get deep, but really to drag a, a good fly down into the zone with. So this is what I came up with and I fished it that very purpose as a point fly with a, or, or a, uh, the top fly on a two nymph rig. And it actually caught some fish for me. Now I wouldn't say it's my go-to fly. I've never had any stellar days with it, but I will say that, you know, it didn't scare the fish away. So there's nothing really special about this fly. Now there is one tactic I will show you in this video that I don't do a lot of on this channel, and it's splitting the thread. Splitting the thread to put some really coarse, uh, thick dubbing because we've got a really, really fuzzy body on this guy. Now one other thing before we get into the tie is Alex from up in Connecticut. We talked about him a couple weeks ago. He works in the Orva shop. He had a guy named Joseph from Darien, Connecticut. 12 year old kid came in the store wanting to learn how to tie flies. Alex sat down with him, you know, told him about this channel. Joseph said, hey, I already know about that channel. So anyway, this fly, Joseph, this one's for you. This is the perfect kind of fly. Uh, this is what really makes fly tying fun. Just sitting down at the bench, experimenting, playing around, coming up with your own stuff, taking it out the river and seeing how it does. And whether you're a new tire or not, that's just something that we all get excited about. So Joseph, I encourage you to get out there and do stuff like this. All you new tires out there, get out there and play, experiment, take your flies fishing, have a blast. That's what it's all about. So about this pattern, it's one that I never named until I sat down and make this video. I, I just called it the fuzzy goat nymph. And I guess that's as good a name as anything. So it's kind of what I'm going to go with. But anyway, it's a kind of cool pattern, really easy to tie. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, my no-name fuzzy goat nymph with two hot spots. Now, I think I mentioned I tie this pretty big because the sole purpose of this fly was to drag another fly down and, and get it pretty deep and then maybe have a chance at catching something while it's down there. So this is size 10, so pretty big, a two extra long nymph hook, 2.8 millimeter tungsten bead, and I'm going to put some wraps on it. Not a ton, maybe eight or 10. This is 015, but it's really to lock that bead in place. And you know, it does give it a little bit of extra weight too. So let's get that jammed up in the bead right there and then break that off. Now here's where I vary from, you know, my, my typical uh, thread. This is a 140 denier. And again, I use uh, a bright red because it's got the hot spot. I create the hot spot with the thread. So just a few wraps behind it to lock it in. You can taper this if you want. I don't think it's that important. But let's take our thread back to the start of the bend, but we're going to take it a little bit past it as well, um, creating this hot spot in the back with our thread. So I will kind of let my thread try to get it flat right here, and then Take it well around the bend right here. So that those last two or three millimeters, that is my hot spot in the back, or tag, whatever you want to call it. So everything behind the thread right there is pretty much a, a hot spot. I'll take a couple of wraps right here just to get it up. Now, here's what I'd, I'd do with this and why I'm using the thicker thread. I'm going to flatten it out and then split it. 
So this is a two, uh, I mean a 140. And that's about as flat as I think I'll be able to get it. And what you do here, just take your finest bodkin or uh, something like a sewing needle. And I've got this little Stonfo tool. It's got a little spring-loaded needle that pops out right there. See that? And this sometimes makes it easier to split your thread. Sometimes it doesn't. And then you just end up wanting to, to split it with your, uh, with your bodkin anyway. But this one, I think it split it okay right there. So I've got the thread split. I've got my finger in between. And I have to let the thread, uh, the bobbin spin, open up just a little bit so I can widen this this loop down a little farther. Okay, now that I've got that thread split right there, and pretty much even, um, it's not always even, and if it's not, I just put the wax on my thicker side, and that's where I'm going to put my dubbing. And again, I'm using goat. This is an Angora goat, but anything that is big and coarse would work right here. You know, uh, uh, let's see, a seal fur would work, a camel would work, just something big and long and coarse. So I'm just kind of bunching it up on one side right here, and then I'll take my finger out, let the thread close back up, and now it's not really caught in, but I'm going to spin it, and a lot of it will catch in. Might want to give it a little, you know, a little help right here, spinning it around that as we're spinning. My bobbin is spinning right now. It's probably spun 30 or 40 times. And maybe not that much, but maybe 20 or 30. So after you've got that, now we've got a, a rope. And it's kind of long, but um, we can work with that. And I'm going to wrap it just in front of that red tag. Now I could just take it all the way up. And if you have some red showing underneath, don't worry about it. It might just make it a little bit cooler. Okay, so we've got most of that on there and it's not really even at all, but I don't care in the slightest because I'm going to really rough it up. I'm taking my popsicle stick with Velcro on it and I'm just gonna brush the heck out of it. Just almost like you're trying to brush all these fibers out on both sides, underneath, on the top. We're just making this about as fuzzy as you can make it. So that is pretty fuzzy right there, and I think we're going to be fine. Now, just one more component. I'm using a grizzly hen, uh, a feather from a grizzly hen right here. And I'm not going to put too many wraps on it. What we've got so far, that fuzzy body, doesn't really imitate anything on a bug, but it does give it motion. So that's really all that does. This little feather right here will give it legs. So lock that in. And I'm going to put, you know, I should probably grab my hackle pliers, but I'm not going to because they're way over there, like a foot away from me. And I'm only putting two wraps. So there's a second wrap right there. Let's catch this off. Okay, that's one wrap. And there's two. Now I'm going to go ahead and snip this excess off right here. Now I'm going to pull it back. So it does two things for me. It will help me lay this, the hackle back, and also create a little spot for our hotspot. It's a dual hotspot bug. And um, there we go, there's the front one. So you can see a little bit of that back one still, and now you can see the front one. Let's go ahead and do a whip finish. I'll definitely put some head cement on these guys. Four turn right there should suffice and snip it off. So there you go, my fuzzy goat, little no-name two hotspot nymph. But been a kind of effective pattern for me, and as you saw, it's really easy to tie. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.